Fire! Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, being a teacher isn't a bed of roses or a bowl of gravy. Not by any stretch of the imagination. A teacher is just like a parent in many respects. Each student must be handled differently, just as a parent must raise each child differently, because they are different. So if a teacher has ten or thirty different pupils, he has ten or thirty different problems. And sometimes they can be real problems indeed. Why don't we call this story The Ranger Factor? Colonel Anders, my boss and the man in charge of the whole western area, ordered me to the ranger school, which is about a hundred miles northwest of Naughty Pine. I was to take command of the school while Monty Westfield took his month's vacation, which he well deserved. I arrived at the school late in the afternoon. Welcome to the Ranger Factory, Bill. <laughs> Factory is right. You certainly got some fine-looking young men here, Monty. <laughs> How are you, anyway? Oh, I'm just fine. In fact, I'm very fine now that I've got a month's loafing looking me right square in the eye. <laughs> I know just how you feel. You surely earned this one. Say, school grounds look like a military academy. Beautiful lawns, well-kept, the buildings and grounds immaculate. Well, this is a military academy, for all practical purposes, Bill. We keep hard discipline here. These men have to learn how to take orders as well as give them later on in their ranger careers. We want men here, not boys. Well, you've been turning out nothing but men, as far as those who come to me are concerned. Fine lads, smart, ambitious, clean-cut, obedient. And yet, even though they obey orders and commands to the letter... They still don't stop thinking. Uh, I'm pleased to hear that, Bill. Look, let's run over to the house with your luggage, and then after dinner I'll brief you on the school and the present crop of rangers to be. <laughs> we hope. You're glad your wife doesn't cook for me all the time, or I'd weigh 300. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm not fighting the Battle of the Belt line continually, Bill. Yes, sir, I can understand that, all right. <sighs> Cynthia can really cook. Uh, say, where are you going on your vacation? Why, uh, we're going east to visit my folks and Cynthia's folks so the grandparents can see their grandchildren more than the usual once a year. Uh huh. We plan to visit some historical and educational spots, and then I'm going to do some fishing. Mm -hmm. Sounds like good tonic for the nerves of a busy man like you. Oh, come in. Here is the evening report, Mr. Westfield. Oh, very good. Uh, Bill, this is uh, Jonathan Morgan, upperclassman. Uh, John, this is a uh, gentleman by the name of Bill Jefferson. We're glad to have you here, sir. We've heard much about you, and we look forward to taking instruction under your command, sir. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I'm glad to be aboard. Is that all, sir? Yes, John. You may go. Thank you, sir. Good night, gentlemen. Good, Good night. night. Tag that young man for my division when he graduates, Monty. Very sharp. Uh, he was a problem when he first came. Oh? Yes, one of the world owes me a living type. What did you do to get it out of him? <laughs> we worked him so hard from sunrise to sunset that he didn't have time or the energy to think up ways to try and bluff his way through life. 
No, he's so used to working for what he gets that he's top man in his class. Good. Uh, we made it rough for him for six months, though. It, it's like taking a rough cut log and working on that log until you cut it up and rebuild it into a fine piece of furniture, polished and something to draw respect and admiration. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many refuse to be rebuilt and never make the grade? Well, uh, we've had six so far. Six out of 1,730 men. Man, that's a remarkable score. <laughs> it's uh, better to find out here they won't make it than out on the field where it may cost lives and property. Mm, right. What do you say we take a walk around the campus, huh? <laughs> that's a fine idea. Yeah, I'll be able to work off some of the dinner before we turn in for the night. I was thinking the same thing. I'll go over the curriculum and the students with you for the next two days, and then well, you'll have to row your own boat. Uh, that'll be fine, Monty. Two days breaking in should keep me from getting blisters on my hands. Sleep? Almost. Why? Guess who I was just introduced to over at the old man's house? Not Bill Jefferson. In the flesh. What's he look like? Oh, about six feet or maybe more. Dark hair. Brown, I'd say. But what a physique. Boy, that guy's nothing but bone and muscle, and it's put together in the right places. He looks like he could break a grizzly and half barehanded. Looks dignified and handsome, too. A natural born leader of men. We're in for something. I wish I were in the new recruit class now. He'll really teach them something. You said it. He looks pleasant, but I hear he's plenty tough. He's fair, but tough. I've heard that he's helped a lot of people and, and that he's a Christian. If that's true, he can't be so bad. We'll find out after the old man leaves on his vacation. <laughs> How many? Forty. How many problem men? <laughs> oh, you're wise as an owl, Bill. Well, there are three problem men. Mm -hmm. Eric Sloan, Frank Perchler, the men call him Brownie, and uh, Nicholas uh, Anzio. Uh -huh. oh, tell me about them. Well, Eric Sloan is on his second tour of the school. Second time? Mm -hmm. well, what happened the first time? Flunk out? No, Eric's a good scholar, but he's frightened almost to death of a parachute jump. Oh, a uh, fear complex, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, we've made some progress, but I'm afraid it's not enough. Brown is another fear complex problem. Oh, is that right? Yes. He fears snakes, any snake. Mm, that's too bad. The uneducated fear snakes because they don't know them or their habits. Brownie shouldn't. With the college-level education he's had. How about Nick? More of the same. What's he afraid of? Water. Well, that's an easy one to overcome. The other two are going to be difficult, to say the least. I'm glad I'm going on vacation. You say that as though you have apprehensions, Marty. <laughs> well, this is the first class that's had three men with fear complexes. I don't envy your job. Usually, we have one man with fear complex, although the aptitude and psychiatric tests usually spot these men before they come to us, and, well, they're weeded out. I'll see what I can do to help these three men. Oh, I know you will. That's why I asked Colonel Anders to uh, <clears throat> send you. Oh, so you're the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill, we need a man here who can be firm but understanding, fair but tough. One who loves his men, but yet won't let them think they can get away with a thing. Well, thank you. I'll do all I can to confirm your trust in me. Say, uh, and you better be getting home? Oh, is it that time already? Oh, it sure is. Bill, I've got to run. Cynthia will have nervous prostration if I'm late. Write me and let me know how things are going, will you? Have a good rest, Marty. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, it looks like we're in for it now, fellas. I know what you mean, Nick. I heard our new CO takes you right up in the field, and there's no horse around either. I suppose the first thing we'll do is make a parachute jump. Nobody knows, Eric. But whatever it is, a tough teacher teaches you a lot, if you can take it. All I hope is that he doesn't hold any swimming contests. Well, I'm not going to worry about it, Brownie. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can, and that's all he can ask. Hmm. Well, I'm for hitting the good old bed, huh? It's almost lights out time. I want to be rested for tomorrow. Right. Let's get out of here and head for the dorm. We'll get ready to face the tiger in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Jefferson. Good morning, John. It's a fine morning, sir. Here are the morning reports. Oh, thank you. Any special orders, sir? Yes, I want all the men and their instructors in the auditorium at 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. I'll take care of it right away. Anything else, sir? Uh, no, not right now, thank you. Oh, Jonathan. Yes, sir? Uh, one more thing. Alert the airfield. I'm taking the recruits up for a fire jump at 10 o'clock. Very well, sir. I'll attend to it. Good morning, gentlemen. I suppose you've heard wild tales about me and how I can skin a cougar with one hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Well, it seems that every time there's a change in command, the tales run wild over the area. Some are true. Most of them are just tales. It's a human trait to decorate truth with the fancies of one's mind, according to the likes or dislikes of the person telling the story. Now, you men have nothing to fear from me, as long as you hit the ball to the best of your ability. I expect you to do your best. If you don't or can't hit the ball the way you should, then I'm going to find out why. We're all human beings. We all make mistakes. Likewise, we all have different abilities. My job is not only to teach you, but to help you. So we'll work together to help you make good. I don't want to see any man here be afraid to come to me and speak his mind. Now, then. Mr. Jefferson. Uh, yes, John. A yellow alert has come in, sir. A small fire has broken out in the tall tree country. Well, this is fine. Thank you, John. Gentlemen, a yellow alert has just come in. A small fire has broken out in the tall tree country. This is most opportune, since I plan to take the recruits up for a fire jump at 10 o'clock. Well, Mr. Anderson. Yes, sir. You will be in charge while I'm gone. All upperclassmen will prepare and stand by according to the usual practice when a yellow alert comes in. If the fire gets out of control, you'll proceed according to plan and send student units to various field commanders. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Fine, thank you. The recruits will immediately leave for the airfield. Gentlemen, you're dismissed. <laughs> Men are ready for inspection, sir. Thank you, John. What's your name, son? Frank Perchlow, sir. The fellas call me Brownie. Just your parachute harness like this, Brownie. It'll be more comfortable. Now, Ranger, tighten up your chin strap on your helmet. You'll be without one when you step out into the slipstream of the plane. Hey, fella, don't let your ripcord twist like that. Gonna need your chute when you start down, you know. What's your name, Major? Nick Angelo, sir. Nick? I don't like the way your chute's packed. Hot put it back to the chute room and get another. Tell him I said to repack this one. Yes, sir. Board the plane, man. As soon as Nick gets back, we'll take off.
Then we'll jump on the next pass to the lee side of the fire. When we get on the ground, we'll group and set up our line of attack. This is only practice for you men, and we'll not fight the fire this time. All right? Hook your ripcords to the line and get ready. The hatch! Now! Follow the man in front of you right out. Keep on his heels so you'll land close together. Don't break the pattern. Come on, young fellow. Out you go. Well, don't just stand there. Jump. Oh, it's too late now. What's your name? Eric Sloan. Eric? There's nothing to be afraid of. Now, let's try it again. I'll be right behind you this time. Perhaps being last man isn't good for you. And the pilot is bringing the plane around again. When I give the word... We'll step to the door and jump. Now! Jump, Ranger! No, 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 don't push me. All right. Stop trembling. You go back with the plane. I'll tell the pilot you to go back. Then I'll jump. If a red alert comes through, you go with the ground. Tell Mr. Anderson those are my orders. Don't do You're not the first ranger who found a difficulty jump. Good work, fellows. You've set up your line of attack quickly and effectively. Let's get to the truck and back to school. Sir? Oh, yes, Nick. How's Eric? Oh, you'll be all right. Recruits, gather around a minute over here. I'm sure you all know what I'm about to say, but I want to refresh your memories. There isn't such a man as a coward in the ranger service. You know it's an unwritten law in the ranger service never to ridicule a man because he shows fear. It's our job to help him overcome this fear. Remember, you may be the next one to crack. We all have a fear of something, and bravery is the overpowering of one's fear sufficiently to carry out the job to be done. All right, let's get back to school. What did he say to you in the plane, Eric? He's a swell guy. Man, I sure wanted to jump for him, but well, I couldn't. He was very kind. Gave me the impression that he understood my fear. Said I wasn't the first ranger who found it difficult to jump. Is that how he put it? His very words. Man, how I wanted to jump. But my feet wouldn't move. Someday I'm going to jump. Just for Bill Jefferson. <laughs> Nick. Good morning, Mr. Jefferson. It's a beautiful day for a swim. That's what I was thinking. How about you and I going for a swim? Me, sir? <laughs> Why, I can swim fine. Yeah? I take it that you feel I need some brushing up or something like that. I'm a good swimmer, and I've got a lot of time in the water. That's fine, Nick. Do you have any objections to swimming with me, or am I too old to compete with a strapping young man like you? <laughs> too old, sir? Why, you're the picture of health. You must have been on the college swimming team. As a matter of fact, I was. You can tell that you're an athlete, sir. I sure admire you for keeping in the pink of condition. Why, there isn't an ounce of fat on you. And you've got a good wind and stamina. Uh, Nick. Yes, sir? In the pool, now. Uh, I guess my tongue isn't as glib as I think it is. That's right. Here in the deep water, sir? No, we'll start in the shallow water. Every day I want you to meet me here, and in two weeks I'll have you enjoying the water instead of fearing it. Then you know. Yes. 
Mr. Westfield told me. But even if he didn't, you gave yourself away. How? A man who's good at anything doesn't have to stop and convince everybody he's good. You swim very well with your mouth, Nick, but you're not fooling anyone but Nick. Also, you've slowly walked away from the pool while you were trying to hypnotize me with your silver tongue and your flattery. I should have known better than to try and buffalo you. I'm ready, and I'm sorry I lied, sir. I apologize, Mr. Jefferson. I know you didn't do it deliberately. That's your defense mechanism against showing your fear of water. But we'll change that in two weeks. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Brownie. Uh, sit down. Thank you, sir. Brownie... Every time we're out in the forest working on a problem, you show a highly nervous attitude. And your alertness is that of a watchdog. You're in a state of readiness to jump out of your skin, if need be. <laughs> Me, sir? Of course. Now, what are you afraid of? Snakes, sir. You ever been close to a rattlesnake? Oh, no, sir. You ever seen a rattlesnake? Uh, only in pictures. You ever studied literature on snakes? To learn their habits and their dangerous points? Well, somewhat, sir. What would you say if I told you there's a rattlesnake in this room in a cage? There is. Where is he? I'm getting out of here. Close that door and come back here. Please, sir. Don't let the snake out. Why not? It isn't going to hurt you. Brownie... You've got a lot to learn about snakes, and the best way to teach you is firsthand. Now, I'm going to let the rattler out on the floor. Please, sir, don't let the snake out. Oh, oh. Brownie, what's the matter? Oh, I'm sick. I'm afraid I'm going to... Sit down on the floor. Now, put your head down between your legs as far as you can. That'll force the blood back into your head. I'll rest for a couple of minutes, and we'll continue. Now, Brownie, you'll notice that although I don't fear snakes, I keep a safe distance from the poisonous ones by using this snake stick. I stand perfectly still... I want to demonstrate a fact. Don't worry about me moving, sir, except for the door. That snake is more afraid of you than you are of it. Is that a fact, sir? Absolutely. Now, a snake can't hear. You can talk as loud as you want and the reptile won't react. You see? But stamp on the floor and see what happens. Oh, they react to vibration. Right. Right. Now, I'll put that rascal back into his cage. Give a snake a chance to get away, and it will. Wear high-top leather boots, and never step over a log or a rock without first giving it a kick. And you'll be all right. Condition red, sir. There's been a rekindle on that fire in the windshield. It's raging out of control. All personnel are ordered into the fight by Colonel Anders. You're to assume top command, sir. All right, let's go. <laughs> Mr. Anderson! Come on. Mr. Anderson! Yes, sir. How long before that fire lane's going to be finished? That's fine. Pull the man with you as you go. The fire will crown here in half an hour. We'll have stopped its spread from this flank. Maddox, where are you? Right here. Have you been able to contact Stumpy Jenkins? No, sir. Here, let me have that radio. I'm going to get Eric to jump from that plane if it's the last thing I do. Bill, Forest Service plane CX-392. Forest Service plane to Bill. Over. Put Eric Sloan on the mic. Right. Stand by. Eric Sloan speaking, sir. Eric? Get this and get it fast. One of my lieutenants, Stumpy Jenkins, 
is trying to fight his way through to us to keep the fire this side of the mountain. He's not going to make it, and we can't raise him by radio. We're all right. We've got the fire stopped here. But you're going to have to jump into clearing 108, which is marked on your map. You've got to keep those men from getting their backs to the ridge, or they'll be killed. You understand? Yes, sir, I, I understand. I'll, I'll jump into the clearing, sir. Over and out. Good boy. Over and out. There he goes, Mr. Jefferson. Eric, jump! Well, that's fine. All right, let's move out before we have a crowning fire on our hands. Kick that log, Brownie! Freeze where you are, Brownie! Rattlesnake! I see him! That one was too big to let live. Good boy, Brownie. You'll be fine now. All right, let's get with it, men. We've got to get around to the other flank and help out. Maddox, get me reports from the other fronts and tell them to stand by for change in orders. Let's forward this quick, men. Now watch yourselves. It's deep, and the current is strong. Nick, this is a new experience for you. You're loaded with gear now instead of just swimming trunks. Keep your head and stay calm. I won't help you. And I'll be right in back of you in case you flung. All right, let's go. Yes, sir. How deep does this get? Not much deeper. I'm losing my footing. Tread water. Keep your head up. Use your hands too. I'm not afraid of water anymore. Gentlemen, the fire is out. You've done a fine job. That goes for recruits and upper class. I'm proud of each and every one of you. Well, the trucks are waiting to take us back to school, so let's get a go. May I speak to you, sir? Yes, Eric, of course. Uh, first, I want to thank you for the wonderful way you've shown me how to overcome my fears. You've been firm, but very understanding. But, um, well, I'm, I'm resigning from the Forest Service in the morning. Eric, you're resigning? Just when you're winning? I'm not sure that I could always come through like I did today, Mr. Jefferson. I, I was scared to death, but I jumped anyhow. But now I'm not so afraid anymore, but, well, I don't trust myself. I wouldn't want to be the cause of any rangers losing their lives because I couldn't deliver when I was supposed to. I hope you'll understand, sir. Yes, Eric, I do. You're a brave and courageous man. It takes a mature man to make the decision you've made. You're facing your problem honestly. That's all we ask. I'm proud to have had you in the school, Ranger. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm proud to have served under you, and I'll never forget the lessons I've learned here in the Ranger factory. Well, it's always best to face your problems honestly. Look them right in the eye, and you'll find out that many will solve themselves. And I should add, as a Christian, if you can't work them out, then come to the Lord in prayer, and he'll help you. If you don't know how to pray, you visit your Sunday school teacher, your pastor, or a Christian friend. They'll help you meet Christ. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger!